Welcome to week one, part C, where we're going to look at an introduction to lean. Now, the first question is, what is lean? And remember we said that lean is a philosophy that recognizes waste as the primary driver of cycle time, cost and quality. So recall we said the three key metrics or key performance indicators in any organization are time, cost and quality. And then lean in particular focuses on cycle time and lead time within those. By using the lean tools, then we can identify and eliminate waste. In other words, reduce the time, reduce the cost and improve the quality in your processes. Now, some of the reasons you should implement lean. The customer generally changes their demand. <clears throat> they increase quantities, which is fine. Maybe they de decrease them, uh, but they may change their mind on what features they want. Uh, they often want price reductions discounts and they want their product on time they don't want it you know um, a day late or an hour late in some cases in fact sometimes they don't even want it early um, particularly if you're a supplier into a manufacturing site they have nowhere to store it uh, so they want it when they uh, ordered it or when they said they would uh, they were told they would get it um, so in order to meet these demanding customers uh, you might be spending extra money on overtime. Uh, you might be struggling to meet your commitments. You know, you might be buying extra equipment just in case. And uh, if you're developing new products, then we know that uh, product development times, product life cycles are shortening. So all of these are reasons why you would implement Lean Six Sigma. This uh, Lean Foundation and Building Blocks gives you a good overview of the Lean toolset. So. The foundation for Lean is this value stream map, and we will look at this, uh, this in future lectures. Um, and there's all these different tools built around Lean or the building blocks. So we have standard work, standard way of doing things, visual management, uh, total productive maintenance, point of view storage, tech time, pull Kanban, flow, and so on. And you can definitely go and, and look in the book and uh, look on the internet and, and check out some of these. But one we will look at in particular is error proofing. Error proofing, also called pokeyoke, also called uh, foolproofing. Error proofing is a more politically correct term. So we look at that in a future lecture as well. And then the roof of uh, lean is, is Kaizen, Japanese for continuous improvement. Now let's look at some of the other tools here of lean. And you can see lean. The Lean Master, which is kind of seen as like a Six Sigma Black Belt Master, but it's not as popular. Um, it's kind of integrated into the Six Sigma Black Belt, is um, you know looking at equipment effectiveness. So for people who have a lot of uh, investment in capital equipment, you can see some of the tools here that you would use. Again, you see error proofing pop popping up. Um, again, I'm not going to go through these during this course, but I just put them there for reference. And then this word flow again, flow of your product or service. So layout optimization, pull systems, rapid assessment, performance metrics, and so on. One of the key messages of Lean that I do want to get across is this idea of cycle time and lead time. So typically the cycle time is, say you're building a, a particular part, it's the time the part goes into the machine till the time it comes out again. So or the time maybe you're working on a particular transaction. So that's the cycle time. If you measure that cycle time, let's say for example, it takes five minutes. And the question then is, how long does it take the customer to get their product or get the output of that? Typically that could be, the ratio might be 500 minutes. In other words, it might be eight hours later. What we really want to do is understand this concept of the cycle time versus the lead time and what the difference is between the two and what the ratio is. The ideal would would be that your cycle time would be equal to your lead time, but that's not uh, practical. Uh, but world class can be less than 10 to 1. So this is a good way of benchmarking your process against best in class without even having to go out and, you know, talk to other suppliers, customers, competitors, and so on. Now, why is this important? Well, let's look again. Let's say your the time from when the customer order comes to the time of the product delivery. These, that can be, in some cases, it can be weeks. Maybe you're waiting for a hospital appointment, even um, you know, waiting for a procedure. So this long lead time, what people tend to do is they tend to 
really focus in on the actual process itself within this area here and in other words they focus on the cycle time and if you can eliminate the waste without doing anything else you can see that you reduce your 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 overall lead time so really what you're trying to do now is reduce this non-value added activity in your process so we talked a little bit about this but just to remind you what about what, what value added activity so we said value is added to a product when it changes the fundamental nature of the product or service so when something is done to the product that the customer cares about and is willing to pay for so you know when they're making your cup of coffee if you're analyzing a blood sample producing a report you're adding value to it everything else is non-value add and given a choice the customer wouldn't pay for non-value add now, it's usually wrapped up in the overall service, but if you can eliminate the non-value add, then um, you can provide a much more competitive product or service. So we'll have a look at, again, this concept of reducing the value add. So let's say, again, your overall lead time here, the value add time is less than 10% of your overall lead time. So let's say this was a day of value add, the customer will get their product to say in 10 days. Now what a lot of people do is they look here and they really focus on what's happening within the value add time. There's a lot of focus there. So instead of maybe workers doing a particular task in a day, um, they want the management wants them to do it in half a day. So they put a lot of focus here. But in actual fact, that doesn't really change the overall lead time because you're ignoring this non-value add time. Now, if the focus was put on the non-value add time, you can see that without even touching the value add time, you can reduce the overall lead time for the customer. So the customer is happy, there's less waste, um, there's less um, time wasted in the overall process, maybe less inventory, less stock. Okay, so, Let's say you walked into a lean company and you wanted to understand, you know, how would you recognize if, if the company was lean or even your own company? How do you know if you're a lean organization? So how do you recognize lean? So you can see here that as you go through, you can see some of the characteristics of lean. So we have a continuous flow throughout your operations, minimal inventories at each stage of the production process. We have production capabilities synchronized to customer demand. We have quality built into the process, real-time quality feedback. We have pull systems in place. We have the whole value stream, what's called a value stream, from, um, I suppose, raw material right through the finished product, right out to the customer, maybe distributors, suppliers, logistics people, and so on, tightly integrated. Multi-skilled operators, team-based, and um, active involvement by workers in troubleshooting and problem solving, not just waiting for the maintenance guy, but doing minor maintenance themselves, which is a concept of uh, TPM. Okay, so just as a final slide in uh, this section. So we know lean, we talked about waste, cycle time, lead time, and some of the tools we might use in here. We talked about Six Sigma and the DMake process, eliminating defects, reducing variability, predictability, and so on, precision. But there's also um, a big push on now around uh, design for Six Sigma, also called DFSS. So we're really trying to have robust product design, which means it's more tolerant to variation. And variation during the manufacturing process and also variation during its use. And these some newer tools coming in around design for Six Sigma, such as VOC Voice the Customer, which we will look at, you know, capability assessment, robust design, predictable product quality. So if you do come across these terms, at least you'll see how they um, how they relate. Okay, uh, that's it for this section. We'll discuss um, a little bit more detail the lean tools and the seven ways in the uh, party of this week's lecture.